Welcome to the Grand Prairie City Council meeting for Monday, January 24th, 2011. I'd ask everyone in attendance to rise and join me in the singing of O Canada. Thank you to the National Film Board of Canada for the images of our country and to Mr. David Bray for his audio rendition of our anthem. Uh, so we'd start the meeting with the adoption of the previous council meeting minutes. Can I have a motion for that? Councillor Rice? I move. Oops, I'm sorry. I move that the minutes of the city council meeting held January 10th, 2011 be adopted. Thank you. Were there any uh, errors or omissions in those minutes? Seeing none, I'll call for the vote. Thank you. And that motion does carry. Uh, I look for a motion for the adoption of the agenda. Councillor Gustafson. Thank you, Mayor Given. I'll move uh, Council adopt the agenda as presented. Thank you. Were there any other additions to the agenda? Seeing none, we'll call for the vote. Thank you. And that motion carries. Uh, next, we come to the delegation portion of our meeting. This is an opportunity for any member of the community to come forward with a community issue, uh, anything that they'd like to speak to council on. Uh, we did have one person who had notified us in advance that they'd like to make a presentation. We have uh, Mr. Baron Manns, the manager, general manager for Aquatera Utilities. Baron. Welcome. Good evening. Thank you. Um, I'm, I'm here to uh, overview the uh, new Aquaterra business plan for 2011 and 2012 and also speak in support of uh, the related utility bylaw amendments that uh, are later on in your agenda in the GGS portion. Uh, so the, uh, the board approved a new two-year business plan um, in December of last year uh, and it uh, looks at uh, some of the uh, changes in service and also the resources that we need for the next two years. Um, in terms of uh, uh, some of the significant initiatives facing us from a solid waste perspective. We're looking forward to implementing uh, curbside blue bag recycling next September. And uh, by mid-2012, we hope to have a um, uh, multifamily residential uh, on-site collection uh, service available as well, although we're not sure at this point what that'll look like. Uh, also from a solid waste perspective, we're, we're working together with the county and the uh, Regional Waste Authority to develop a, a long-term uh, solid waste strategy and the city is also participating in that process and so that'll look at the entire region uh, over a long term and try and come up with the best solutions for everyone. Uh, from a water perspective we're in in actually really good shape uh, in terms of uh, ongoing capital requirements uh, within the next few years, however, we, we will be looking at some work down at the river. Uh, the uh, river itself is migrating uh, north uh, on the no to the north side, which is where our facilities are, and we'll need to protect the riverbank and at that time also put in a, a new water intake uh, to continue to uh, provide a source for that raw water for the long term. Um, 
we've also done some some work in looking at uh, accommodating growth in the west end of the city uh, particularly looking at the um, reservoir that we have out at the airport and at some point uh, we'll need to provide a dedicated water transmission line to provide uh, more water to that reservoir as demand increases um, and that also may be a, an issue with, with the new hospital and, and its uh, new location as well. Uh, so other than that, uh, the water system's in, in, uh, in good shape. Uh, the, our, our most significant challenges, I think, overall are on the wastewater side, uh, primarily with uh, our wastewater treatment plant that's now over 25 years old and um, requires a major upgrade, and, and that's driven uh, by two reasons. Uh, one is to accommodate continued growth and the second is to um, meet uh, more stringent environmental standards that the, uh, the province has laid out for us. Uh, so the initial uh, capital cost for that is $45 million, and so that's the elephant in the room for us. Um, it'll uh, consume uh, a lot of our borrowing capacity, and we've looked at deferring uh, most other capital projects uh, to accommodate that particular upgrade in the next uh, uh, two, to three, two, to f two to four years, I guess. Um, so the, uh, uh, the rates that uh, uh, commensurate with those challenges, uh, we're looking at uh, a relatively uh, modest increase on the water side of 3.6%. Um, on the um, solid waste side, uh, again, I think it's a 3% increase for um, garbage collection. And uh, the uh, uh, with the introduction of the uh, curbside recycling, there won't be any change to the uh, recycling costs. In 2012, we, we hope that those costs will actually go down as we uh, decommission the, uh, the depot system. And once we have a residential uh, multifamily program in place, we'll have a better sense of what those actual costs will look like. On the uh, wastewater side, uh, we're looking at uh, a 9.7% increase in each of the next two years, again to accommodate that, that major upgrade at the waste plant. Uh, uh, that will uh, result in an additional cost to a typical residential customer of about $3.10 a month in 2011 and uh, an additional $3.40 uh, in the following year for those wastewater charges. Um, we're also uh, in the process of transitioning to a different governance structure uh, as a result of the uh, changes approved by all shareholders last summer. Uh, we're uh, moving to a, an expanded board made up of uh, nine members uh, that are uh, all public members. And so uh, we have a uh, special shareholders meeting planned for later this month that will begin that process of uh, new appointments with it. Um, transitioning in full at our annual meeting in June. Um, so that's a, a quick overview of our business plan and some of the highlights or, or major issues uh, before us and I'd be pleased to answer any questions that you have with respect to that or the utility bylaw changes that are also related to that. Okay, thanks very much Mr. Mans. Uh, I do see uh, one in the queue right now, Councillor Rice. Yeah, three questions if I may. Uh, the city's uh, <coughs> wastewater treatment charge is going up roughly 10 percent but I believe Claremont and Sexsmith are going up substantially more like 20 and 25 percent uh, so number one why why is their increase much more than ours um, so I have four questions so then this is a sub question of question one um, their wastewater treatment charge now is still lower than ours even if it is going up uh, twice a percentage number so can you explain that to me sure uh, each of the uh, wastewater systems is intended to be uh, self-supporting and so we when we've gone back and looked at uh, the last number of years we found that the uh, the Claremont and Sexsmith wastewater systems weren't and and uh, effectively were being um, cross subsidized by uh, well effectively the uh, the Grand Prairie uh, wastewater system uh, so, uh, as you noted, those uh, wastewater charges are relatively uh, uh, or significantly lower than those in Grand Prairie. And so part of the reason the increase seems so large is that uh, they're not that uh, significant a cost to begin with. 
um, in, and the reasons for the, the charges, again, are to recover the cost of operating those systems. Um, in, in Claremont, uh, we, we found that uh, operating the lagoon uh, with an aeration system has resulted in some significant power costs uh, now that that system's in place. And we've also found that with the, uh, a large amount of uh, industrial use out there, that we're seeing uh, uh, sewer discharges well beyond the limits set in our bylaw. And that's resulted in uh, a lagoon that was just upgraded a couple of years ago having to be dredged because of all of the uh, solids that have gotten in there uh, that really shouldn't be in there. So industrial monitoring is going to be a big focus in the Claremont system uh, to try and, and reduce those ongoing operating costs. So uh, those uh, rate increases are, are certainly more significant than in the city. Um, in in uh, Claremont, for example, the additional cost to a customer this year will be an additional $4 a month uh, compared to the additional $3.10 in Grand Prairie. Second question, if I may. The province has deemed that we will do a $45 million upgrade. Um, is there a, a group? Uh, we're not the only ones that got hit with this. It's all across the province. Is, are you part of any sort of group that is saying to the province, excuse me? Yeah, the, the, uh, the issue of, of uh, more stringent environmental standards, I must say I think Alberta is one of the leaders in the, in the country in terms of uh, wastewater uh, effluent standards. Uh, the, 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 the challenge is uh, that the, um, the requirement to upgrade uh, doesn't happen to everyone all at once. So um, with, with approval renewals that are 10 years in, uh, in duration, that's when the province has an opportunity to um, introduce higher uh, standards. So some of the uh, cities throughout the province have already upgraded their wastewater treatment plants. I think uh, Calgary spent, well, I think it was over 300 million on a new one. Um, Fort McMurray has just built a $220 million wastewater treatment plant. And so um, uh, in, in terms of a, a concerted lobby group, uh, be, because those are all happening at, at uh, quite different times, uh, we, we haven't had that concerted effort. Uh, we continue to work, though, uh, with the province and, and as well with the federal government to pursue funding uh, for the kind of um, uh, environmental uh, improvements that we're facing here. Did Fort McMurray or Calgary get any money from the other levels of government do you, are, that you're aware of? Uh, I, know, I know Fort McMurray, uh, I think, received $100 million for their water, wastewater systems for the, uh, from the province, as well as a $100 million uh, interest-free loan. And so it's, it's kind of ironic that they've completed a $220 million uh, wastewater treatment plant, and yet their wastewater charges are the lowest among the cities that we've surveyed in the province. Okay. Uh, third question. Um, I, I assume one of your, uh, your main priority is uh, to ensure access to clean drinking water for all of the people in the in the region uninterrupted access to clean drinking water your business plan um, uh, talks about uh, measuring performance in key accountability areas um, and uh, demonstrates your commitment to striking a balance between quality service at good value um, and responsibility to the communities while remaining a profitable, sustainable company. Can you give me one example of where you've, you've balanced off those? Sure. Uh, one, one of our focuses is, is to secure a long-term, reliable raw water supply. And we've been working with the province on um, obtaining a new diversion license from the Wapiti River. Uh, we expect that uh, diversion license to, to uh, come into place this year. Uh, we were really the first in the province uh, to obtain a, a diversion license that considered uh, the, the quality of the effluent that we're returning uh, at the same time that we're taking it out. And, and that, um, that flexibility shown by the province uh, has saved us uh, over $30 million in having to build off-stream storage, which would have been the alternative to, to what the province has, uh, has approved for us. So I think that's uh, an example where you know, pursuing an innovation and, and uh, some flexibility shown by the province has resulted in some significant savings uh, to our utility customers. Um, 
we do comparisons with uh, other cities throughout the province in, in how our utility charges compare. And while we're uh, somewhat higher than average, uh, it's, it's certainly a, an area that we're very conscious of uh, and look for ways that we can continue to be more effective in how we provide service uh, so that we can um, keep those rates reasonable. Thank you very much. That's all my questions. Thank you, Your Worship. Thank you, Councillor Rice. I see Councillor McLean. Thank you, Mayor Gibbon. Uh, sir, I, a couple questions I have for Aquaterra is, uh, in the local paper, I've never read nothing about provincial government, the changes and how it's going to affect the, the taxpayers on paying the bill and $45 million. I think we could maybe get that out there and, sh and show the public, Joe and Susan, what's going on here. And a couple questions. We went from in uh, March $69 a ton for waste of the dump to $84 in June of 09. Now we're going to 89 and then back then we went from five bucks to, you know, say uh, somebody going from their home, bringing some garbage to 10 bucks. Now we're gonna make it 12. And it just seems like we're going all over the board, raising everything. And I'm just wondering if there's some room here, some wiggle room. And, uh, but anyways, it seems like it's added up everywhere. And how much will this be paid off with the 50 million that's gonna go in that you have to spend and what's the figures looking at by these increases? Are you going to come back in two years or whatever, the new board, and add on more? Uh, how, you know, I'm kind of trying to direct it. With some of these increases, is it going to pay for the bill in 20 years, or are you going to want more in two years? That kind of, that's kind of what I'm asking. And, and I think the public doesn't know uh, what's happening a little bit here. I've never seen it in the paper. Okay. I'll just say that. Um, with, with respect to the landfill operation, I'm pleased to say that we're holding the line on any increases in tipping fees and so there will be no increase planned for the next two years. Uh, the, the current rates that we are charging there are intended to ensure that the landfill and the solid waste operation is self-supporting. And so those um, tipping fees increased uh, a couple of years ago to the current level to provide for that. Uh, we've seen pro probably the, the landfill has been the um, uh, the hardest hit uh, of our operations by the slowdown in the economy uh, where we're seeing significant reductions in the amount of volume coming in uh, whereas the cost of operating that facility is largely fixed. Uh, we're, we're seeing a, a diversion of material within the city uh, kind of splitting between uh, the Claremont landfill and our own landfill and so we've seen a, a revenue drop uh, in recent years. It's been significant. And so in response to that, we've looked to reduce our expenses and we've sold off equipment and, and, uh, and uh, laid off some staff to, uh, to bring our costs in line with the revenues we've been receiving. So uh, we'll continue to focus on, on uh, ensuring that that operation is sustainable. Um, uh, and now each of the utilities, again, is intended to be self-supporting. So the, the, the water system is intended to recover the costs of that system through the rates uh, for water, same with uh, wastewater, same with solid waste. And so the cost of the uh, wastewater treatment plant is intended to be borne through the wastewater component of our utility charges. Um, and, and that's why you're seeing uh, those almost 10% uh, rate increases in that utility and not in, in any of the others. Councilor McLean? Just the question I'm asking is the, the Alberta government says $45 million to the sewer part as well. How soon would this, be, with the increases, is this going to cover it? Like, is this a 20 year mortgage deal on this? Is this, and we don't know if we're going to get half back in grant or if we're going to have a delay of a couple of years. So there's a lot of what ifs here as well. Right. Um, so this is kind of, I'm asking a kind of direct question. Maybe you don't know, but maybe the, for sure if you don't know, the public don't know. Yeah, well, the, the, uh, our, our, our current uh, requirement to complete the upgrading and meet uh, new standards is, uh, is 2014. And so we're, we're working uh, towards that deadline, and while at the same time working with the province to see if there's opportunities to either uh, stretch that out or to obtain some kind of uh, support from the province. Uh, currently, uh, our business plan assumes that there isn't any funding support from them because there's no existing program that we can apply for in that regard. Uh, so uh, depending on, uh, so, so we've just hired a consultant in December to undertake the detailed design 
And so in, in about six or eight months, we'll have a better sense of what uh, the actual construction costs may look like. Um, and then we'll see what, how that will impact our rates further out. Um, we will do substantial borrowing to fund this project and expect that borrowing uh, to take at least 20 years to pay off. So the, uh, the cost of this, this major upgrade will be borne <coughs> and stretched out over that kind of a time horizon. Thank you. Okay. Thanks, Councilman McLean. Any further questions for Mayor? No, seeing none, then uh, Mr. Manns, if there is nothing further from you, thanks very much for making a presentation here today. We appreciate it. And uh, I'd have to say as well, I, I think uh, Council appreciated the opportunity to have a comment on the business plan uh, well in advance in previous years. Uh, there had been a concern that uh, Octaria's business plan would come to Council first at a committee. Uh, the committee would see it and, and the rates were sort of contained therein. And uh, we really appreciate the opportunity that Council had to, and all the shareholders had, to comment on Aquaterra's business plan well in advance of it coming here today. And, and uh, so I think that was a good change to the process and hope to see that continue, especially with the new board coming in over the next while. So, yeah. Thanks very much. Good. Thank you. Have a good evening. Okay. So this is the opportunity for anyone in the community who wants to address Council to come forward with uh, any community issue. I would ask if there's anybody in the public that wants to come forward to address council, and I see that there is somebody. Uh, you're more than welcome to come and join us at the table. Uh, we'd ask that when you come up, just uh, let us know your name and uh, make your presentation. We do try to ask to keep it to about five five minutes if you can. And please have a seat and Sorry. welcome. My name is Jamila King. If you've noticed your your log online for the Facebook, you probably noticed a lot of my posts. As many citizens of the city, I'm also angry at the snow clearing like everybody else, and you guys probably all have a headache by now. However, I've spent the last two weeks doing up what every other city does in Alberta, as well as many over other places, to show what the differences are in Grand Prairie versus here. Just a start of a proposal for you guys to maybe change it a little so that you don't have so many angry people. <laughs> um, most of the other cities in Alberta, I won't even use cities outside of Alberta just because people might have an issue with that. Um, from October to April, they have 24 hour snow clearing when there are storms um, coming and stuff, they set it up that way. Their cities do two 12-hour shifts. If it's not needed, they do the one 12-hour shift. How they judge the snow is usually it comes down between um, how much snow is coming on the roads and what the actual arterials and main bus routes like here, that's number one in their priority two. But instead of waiting to see how much is down, they judge it anywhere from every city from, like I've talked to the Department of Transportation for, um, Red Deer, Edmonton, Calgary, Lethbridge, and three other places. Um, their judgment is usually from three to five centimeters. Um, it's a real worry to them if eight centimeters is on the road or whatever. That's when they really get stuff going much faster than they, if there's more than eight centimeters forecast for next day, they're out there. Um, as well, I know that there's a noise bylaw here in Grand Prairie. It seems like every other city from October to April, they, they have a petition or whatever set up in their city that if you have issues with noise during snow clearing equipment, then you just front it to the city. But it seems like everybody's fine from October to April as long as city workers plowing the roads when need be. As well, I've also done a, a petition um, I've started going to different communities to see how people feel about the whole noise thing because I thought that would be a big deal. Um, so far, I've done Royal Oaks, I live in Summit, and I've done Hard Mission Heights and O'Brien. So far, nobody seems to have a problem with city equipment moving around, why they're sleeping, as long as they can get to work in the morning. Um, like I said, this is just the beginning of what I have proposed for you guys. The other thing I was looking at is our budget 
in Grand Prairie is actually higher um, per area that we have to clear than um, both Lethbridge and Red Deer and they actually have less um, equipment to work with per area so I I don't know how like exactly how you guys clear it I would have to see your actual policy and everything where you go and whatever but it seems like there's double the amount of work being done in certain areas where other places are neglected here and maybe that's where the money is disappearing to um, like I said I've only reviewed this for the last week so if I I plan on doing up the whole proposal of everything but I've only had a few days to work on this of course but I'm open to any questions that you guys might have so far okay thanks very much uh, is there anybody that has any questions for Ms. King Let's see Councillor Rice has a question I'm not sure I understand what you mean by your proposal. I will do up an entire thing on how, like a completely different snow clearing ideal than what you have that will still work inside the budget with the equipment we have. I have it half done, but I didn't, I didn't feel that it was done enough to actually provide it to you tonight, basically. So you're, you're proposing to table this with us as a volunteer? I could. <laughs> okay, thanks. Okay, okay. thanks, Councillor Rice. Councillor McLean. Uh, thank you, Mayor Given. Yes, well, I say go forward on that and see what kind of uh, advice you can give us because I think we're going to be looking at this in the near future about residential snow removal and any input we can have about you say comparisons to Red Deer, Lethbridge, maybe St. Albert. Um, go forward on it. Uh, have community involvement and help us direct us in a little different way that might help improve it I congratulate you and do it and as you can see there's a lot of talkers out there but who's back there <laughs> no do it I it's good to look and at. I I've, I've done seven years of political science and working like I've worked in six different municipalities and this behind me is ridiculous so really it is the community they talk a lot but they aren't willing to come out and show their support and stuff so instead of being pissed off and coming here and just yelling and screaming, I spent my time to do a proposal that you could use with the budget you have and the equipment you have. Um, I look forward to uh, having a look at that. Thank okay. you. Let's see, Councillor Wong. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you very much, Mayor Given. I've got just a couple of questions to ask or, or a couple of things for you to consider if you're doing research. Um, one of the things I'm collecting is the amount of snow in these other cities um, from what I've been gathering so far. Grand Prairie gets about 50% more snow than just about every other city in Alberta, which is kind of And that's the reason crazy. why I actually did um, cities like St. John's, Newfoundland, which gets way more snow than here. They have a smaller budget per percentage for the actual amount of people. And there, for their whole city, it takes six weeks to clear it. That's a much bigger size city, and it's a lot less time. So. To me, it seems, I know they have a little more equipment, but I think there's certain pieces of equipment we do need here that we might want to look into because we need to use it in a certain way that we don't have right now. Okay, yeah, and that was the other thing I was going to ask you if you could research how long it takes every other city to clear every street. And i It takes us about six weeks. Yeah, I've done, yeah. I've done Toronto and St. John's and... Um, Waterloo, just bigger cities just to see what the standpoint is, as well as, like I said, Lethbridge, Calgary, Edmonton, and Red Deer, only because they don't obviously get as much snow as here in Grand Prairie because we're no more northern, but places like St. John's, Newfoundland, they get way more snow, and they, have, they need to get rid of it. I, I'm personally from Newfoundland, and there's times that I've waken up in the mornings, and it's up over my head in my doorway, let alone out on the street. And in two days, they have my street cleared and I can go down it. It's heavy. <laughs> I guess the last thing to consider is uh, service levels. That's what really takes a lot of time. We have to haul a lot of our snow away. Our graders also clear the end of everyone's driveway, and that takes a lot of time as well. That was the other issue I was looking at, because in Newfoundland, we don't clear the end of everybody's driveway. They are responsible if they want their snow moved at a faster pace, the end of their driveway, that's their responsibility. 
The other thing is, instead of piling it all in the middle of the road like we do here, you know how you have those snow blowers that go down the sides and blow it up? We send one down the middle of the street to fill up the dump trucks to send it away faster instead of getting a snow plow to put it in each time like they've been doing it around here. It's half, not even half, it's like one third the amount of time that it takes for those snow plows or the, the loaders and stuff to fill up the dump truck as it is for the snow blower to blow it all in there. Okay, thanks. Those are kind of the things that we're gonna be discussing tomorrow at Public Works. So okay. I don't know if, you, if you're available, but at 10 o'clock we're going to be having a meeting for Public Works and we'll see if I can get off work. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Any further questions for Ms. King? Um, I, I don't see any in the queue. So thanks very much. If you do develop some information, of course, I appreciate it. This is fantastic. You're exactly right. There are not a lot of people who come to council tables with solutions or suggestions, and so I think council all appreciate that. Um, as you have information and develop it, uh, mm -hmm. I know that our administration is certainly uh, comfortable in looking at that and, and uh, anything that you provide I'm sure council would find it helpful as well uh, so I encourage you to do that as Councillor Wong mentioned there is a public works committee meeting coming up as early as tomorrow um, but if you do take some time to develop your information uh, I think we'd be happy to have you submit it at any time and we'd certainly consider it okay thanks very much thanks for coming today So is there anyone further who wanted to address council on any matters uh, related to anything community-wise? Um, looking out into the crowd, are two other people are shaking their heads saying, no, no, not us, not us. Okay, um, then uh, seeing nothing further, then we'll close the delegation portion of our meeting and we'll move on to public hearings of which we have none scheduled for tonight. Um, we have no unfinished business, but we do have reports. And so the first is item 8.1 bylaw C 1015A and uh, Mr. Scavage, I'd ask you to introduce this one. Thank you, Mayor Given. Uh, the f first item has to deal with the uh, application that was received by the city to redistrict lands in the College Area Parks Redevelopment Plan to change them to a medium density uh, status, which would be reflected so in the future land use map. Uh, currently, uh, there were two buildings on the site. Apparently, those have been demolished. And the intent of the applicant is to uh, construct two semi-detached dwellings, which would result in a total of four dwellings on that site. Okay, thank you very much. And so we're here to set uh, date, time, and location and first reading. We can I have a motion for that? Councillor Rice? I move first reading of bylaw C 1015A to amend the College Park Area Redevelopment Plan. Okay, thank you. We have a motion for first reading. We'll call the question. I'll please enter your votes. Thank you. That motion carries. Please carry on, Councillor Rice. I move that Council establish Tuesday, February 22nd, 2011 at 7 o'clock p.m. in Council Chambers as the date, time, and location for public hearing purposes for Bylaw C 1015A. That meeting will be on Tuesday the 22nd as Monday the 21st is Family Day in Alberta. Thanks very much, Councillor Rice. So we have a motion on date, time, and location, uh, noting that it will be on a Tuesday rather than Council's regular Monday night meetings. Uh, any discussion on date, time, or location? Seeing none, I'll call for the vote. Thank you, and that motion carries. Um, that was everything for that item of business. And on to item 8.2, bylaw C1100-168. Mr. Descavage. Thank you, Mayor Given. This application has to do with amending the land use bylaw to rezone the parcels previously discussed from restricted residential district to a DC or site specific development control provision district. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, can we have a motion on this item? Councillor Gustafson. Thank you, Mayor Given. I'll move the council give bylaw C 1100 168 to amend the land use bylaw first reading. Thanks very much. Uh, we'll call for the vote. And that motion carries. Please carry on, Councillor Gustafson. Thank you. I'll move that Council establish Tuesday, February 22nd, 2011 at 7 p.m. in Council Chambers as a date, time, and location for public hearing purposes for bylaw C-1100-168. Okay, thanks very much. Uh, again, just to note that this will be on a Tuesday rather than Council's regular Monday night. Uh, any further discussion on date, time, and location? Seeing none, I'll call for the vote. <coughs> Thank you, and that motion carries. Uh, those were all of our uh, all of our reports. 
and we're on to regular committee business and starting with item 9.1 the Public Works Committee. Councillor Wong. Thank you very much Mayor Given. I move that Council receive the minutes of the Public Works Committee meeting held January 11th 2011. Thank you. Was there any discussion on those minutes? Errors or omissions that anyone noticed? Seeing none we'll call for the vote. Motion carries. Please carry on, Councillor Wong. I move that Council approve expansion of the scope of work for ISL Engineering and Land Services Limited in the amount of $97,942, excluding GST, by sole sourcing the construction services for the 116th Street upgrades from 84th to 68th Avenue. And in speaking to that, Mayor Given, uh, this, was, this was a street that Council had identified in the budget to uh, do some paving on and ISL has been doing the work adjacent to that and by sole sur sourcing the construction or the uh, engineering work, uh, we're able to realize quite a bit of savings. Okay, thanks very much, Councillor Wong. Any discussion or debate on the motion? Seeing none, I'll call the vote. Thank you, and that motion carries. Councillor Wong. I move that Council approve the request to extend the period for subdivision approval and endorsement for subdivision application Z2008-0016, Grand Banks Phase 1, located at uh, Northwest 11716 West of the 6th, Plan 032-1859, Lot 1, Block 1, for one year to expire on December 17th, 2011. Uh, this is similar to one that council has already extended a period for. Um, the subdivision, subdivision approval authority has already um, extended them a one-year period and council can now extend them an additional, grant them an, an additional one-year extension through the uh, Public Works Committee recommendation. Okay, thanks very much. Councillor Wong, any discussion or debate? I see Councillor Rice. Uh, one of the difficulties I know that we've identified uh, in the near past um, was we're looking at uh, land use bylaw amendments. And so if we grant extensions on, on development permits, um, it's obviously the development department doesn't see that this is going to create a problem. Councillor Wong, you'll have to turn someone to the next speaker there. So, Councillor Wong? Sure. Thank you, Mayor Given. Uh, this is just for land division and the, uh, the plans still have to come to, uh, to the city for development permits, in which case um, any of our current uh, MDP and outline plan requirements will still uh, be valid for uh, any, any future development. Okay. So essentially, uh, I think administration had uh, advised council at the committee that uh, any new standards that would come along, uh, that this development would have to meet that. Yeah, that's it. Okay. Okay. Any further discussion or debate on the motion? Seeing none, I'll call for the vote. Thank you. That motion carries. Councillor Wong. I move that council waive the fees and securities in the amount of two hundred and thirty-eight thousand four hundred and fifty-seven dollars and one cent for the development and construction of the third fire hall. And this is just some internal. Uh, shifting or waiving of funds so that we don't have to pay ourselves to uh, shift back into our other budgets. Okay, thanks very much. Any discussion or debate? Um, just seeing none, I would note that this is a standard practice that the city has done on a number of other projects. Uh, so I'll call for the vote. Thank you. And that motion carries. Councillor Wong, was there anything else that you wanted to highlight from that set of minutes? I'd be pleased to answer any questions. Are there any questions for Councillor Wong on uh, that public works meeting? Seeing none, uh, Councillor Wong, I think the next meeting was yours as well. Yes, it is. I move that Council receive the minutes of the Combative Sports Commission meeting held January 11th, 2011. Thank you. Uh, was there anybody that caught any errors or omissions in those minutes? Seeing none, I'll call for the vote. Thank you. That motion carries. Councillor Wong, anything to highlight uh, from that meeting? The only thing I can highlight is that uh, this was a meeting to deal with the appeal of Savvy Productions. Uh, the committee felt that it was, uh, the, the committee made the decision to uphold the appeal and to uh, 
the, which was to revoke the license for the event. Um, the, the applicant did come forward. Uh, they didn't really have grounds for an appeal. They were, we were asking um, if there was something in the process that they felt happened that shouldn't have happened, and that was not the ground of, grounds for their appeal. They felt that the process was adhered to. They just simply missed the date. It was a clerical error. Um, at this point in time, we felt that uh, there wasn't enough time to uh, to make up for um, for their error, basically, and for us to uh, back out on a decision that we felt was made in in well, it, we we felt it was the right decision to make at the time. Okay, thanks very much, Councillor Wong. I see uh, Councillor Rice and Q. Did you have a question on that? Item? I I do, um, uh, Councillor Wong. There was some. There seemed to have been some contention in their uh, proposal that they they made a check to the Crystal Center as opposed to the City of Grand Prairie, and that was why they missed the deadline. Um, is is that accurate, or? Well, Councillor Wong. I would say that that's necessarily accurate. They made that check out to the Crystal Center, but it was three weeks late. Oh, okay. Yeah. That's and and any time you're gonna try to. Uh, put down a security deposit, if it's going to be that late and you're hoping that it's going to be accepted, it should be certified and it should be made out to the right payee. It should be basically in the form of cash. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. And and any further questions? Uh, can I go back to the public works for one minute? We moved along quickly off that. Um, uh, okay. Once, sure. Okay. Please just ring in, Councillor Rice. Yeah. Just, uh, oh, okay. Just a very quick question. Um, correspondence uh, from the province uh, regarding the airport, the entrance to the airport, the horrible, terrible entrance to the airport that the province says it's our highway and the posted 90 kilometers an hour is appropriate and traffic signals are not warranted at this time. Um, do, do we keep, like we get many complaints about this, do we keep bugging them and Keep saying, do another one. I think the uh, discussion at the committee was uh, was essentially just that, maybe in a uh, nicer form. Uh, <laughs> but we did highlight it as one of the items that we would uh, put on our list for when we go down to the legislature to talk to the minister, uh, so that we can speak to them personally. Um, the minister's letter did say that they were reviewing the results of their traffic study, uh, so there may be some additional information. And when we have that, of course, that would be another opportunity to go back to the minister and highlight our, our need for this. So, yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, and so next, actually, Councillor Rice, okay. I believe you have the General <coughs> Government Services Committee. I will. I move that Council receive the minutes of the General Government Services Committee meeting held January 12th, 2011. Okay. Thank you very much. Did anyone notice any errors or omissions in that set of minutes? Seeing nothing, we'll call for the vote. Thank you, and that motion carries. Councillor Rice. Okay, we thank Mr. Manns for coming with his presentation this evening, and as the, His Worship mentioned, uh, providing us with our an opportunity for input on the Aquaterra business plan um, in a timely fashion. So I would move that Council receive the Aquaterra Utilities 2011-2012 business plan for information. Okay, thanks very much. Uh, any discussion or debate on the motion? Seeing none, I'll call for the vote. Thank you. That motion carries. Councillor Rice. I move first reading of bylaw C1139J to amend the uh, City Aquatary Utility Bylaw. Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, there is no debate on first reading, so I'll call for the vote. Thank you. I move second reading of bylaw C1139J to amend the city aquatory utility bylaw. And in speaking to it, I would say that under the agreement that we have, um, we have two choices uh, with the increases from Aquaterra. We can either pass them on as a user pay or we can take it out of general revenues. By passing this bylaw, we have been, we have chosen the user pay uh, scenario. Okay, thanks very much, Councillor Rice. Any discussion or debate on second reading of the uh, utility bylaw? No. Okay. 
Seeing none then, I'll call for the vote. Thank you. That motion, car that motion carries. Councillor Rice. I move that we have three readings of bylaw C 1139J. Thank you very much. So a motion to have three readings. Um, the motion must carry unanimously uh, in order to, for us to have the third reading tonight. If it does not carry unanimously, then we would carry this over to uh, the next meeting to have the third and final reading. If I can just clarify, this does not mean that you are in favor of the motion just proceeding with it. That's, yeah. So what we're voting on is voting on whether we proceed with it yeah. tonight or whether we save it until next meeting. Okay. okay. Um, so I'll call for the vote. Thank you. That motion carries. Councillor Rice, would you like to I vote? move third reading of bylaw C 1139J to amend the City Aquitary Utility Bylaw. Okay, thank you very much. So this is the third and final reading of the utility bylaw. Um, this motion does not need to be unanimous, and so uh, I would call for the vote. That motion carries with one opposed. Um, Councillor Rice, would you care to carry on? I move that Council approve the offer to purchase a single family dwelling located at 9405 82nd Avenue as presented with the total amount of $141,500 less advertising legal fees and a 3% realtor commission to be added to the housing reserve. Um, this is one of the houses in our affordable housing. It needed a lot of work. Um, and uh, uh, obviously, I think we're, we're very happy with the price we got for it. I think it was slightly above our asking price. Okay, thanks very much, Councillor Rice. Any discussion or debate or questions? I see Councillor Radburn in the queue. Thank you, Mayor Gibbon. Um, this is a, a good news story. Um, this was a property that uh, we were working with uh, Habitat for Humanity, and that didn't work out. I think we advertised it once before and didn't get bids. This time we actually got 12 bids, as I recall. Um, but um, I think uh, kudos to administration. As I understand it, we did a little more advertising. Uh, and of course, uh, we worked through uh, the realtor, but uh, uh, we did receive uh, those co very competitive bids. Thank you. Thanks very much, Councillor Radburn. Councillor McLean? Uh, Councillor Radburn, pretty well answered, but uh, does this go on uh, the realty uh, line to? Put bids like how is this presented for the public to look at if they do want to buy this? Uh, the MLS. Do you mean? Yes. Does this go on MLS for doing this, John or whoever? Did? Yeah. I, okay. I, I believe it did yeah, go through yes. the MLS, and that was the partnership with the realtors. The city of Grand Prairie and the Grand Prairie Real Estate Board have had a very long-standing, successful relationship where they've supported our affordable housing mm -hmm. initiatives by agreeing to a flat three percent. Uh, commission on any sales that the city has done, which is uh, certainly a benefit to the community and uh, certainly appreciated by, by council. Okay, any further discussion or debate on the motion? Seeing none, I'll call for the vote. That motion carries. Councillor Rice? Uh, Sorry, Councillor Rice, can you just ring in your microphone? Sorry. No? I would move that Council approve policy 112 corporate policy and associated procedure and sponsorship application form. Um, and this is a uh, corporate sponsorship policy. Uh, the policy will create an application process for sponsorship requests. What this policy um, will do is we have several organizations that of course come to the city for funding for various sources, uh, sponsorship opportunities, that type of thing. This will coordinate them into one ask as opposed to them um, going to four or five different departments. So it will create fairness and equity as well as um, fairness um, and efficiencies, I should say, I'm sorry. And the committee had sent it back one time feeling that um, you know, those uh, uh, not-for-profits who are looking for a basket, for a door prize, that we didn't want to make the application process too onerous. The committee was satisfied that the new policy and application form uh, really, uh, really made uh, uh, amendments that, that ensure this doesn't happen. Thanks very much, Councillor Rice. Any discussion or debate on the motion? Uh, I see Councillor Radburn. Thank you, Mayor Gavin. Just to, uh, I guess, uh, compliment, supplement. Um, uh, 
Councilor Rice's comments. Um, just kudos to, uh, to admin. Uh, we were concerned that it might become an onerous process for not-for-profits, and uh, they came back with a uh, one-pager to apply and a one-pager to report, and only if uh, you receive $1,000 or more. I think $2,000 or more has to come to Council, but uh, I think there was some tweaking of the policy that uh, made sense to me, so I'll certainly be supporting the motion. Okay, thanks very much. Any further discussion on the motion? Seeing none, then I'll call for the vote. Thank you. That motion carries. And Councillor Rice, I believe you have one final item on your agenda. I do. I move that the city issue a request for information for development concepts for the former York Hotel and or Germain Park lands. The RFP, the RFI, I mean, will be open for 60 days to close April 8th. Uh, <coughs> Council will note that this is a slight amendment from what appears in your agenda. The RFI must address the following principles. The proposal meets the concepts within the Downtown Enhancement Plan and the Municipal Development Plan. The proposal will explain the overall financial benefit to the city. The proposal will uh, include project timelines, as well as developers' expertise in projects of this nature, including ability to complete and proven financial expertise, and further, will explain the increase in density of the proposal and impact on activity in the downtown. Okay, thanks very much, Councillor Rice. Uh, any discussion or debate on the motion? Seeing none, we'll call for the vote. Thank you. This uh, and certainly carries. Oh, this this um, uh, we've had several uh, input uh, from several people that they want to see this get moving very quickly. I think tonight you took a giant step forward. Just one other thing, if I may, I want to uh, offer congratulations. Uh, the city of Grand Prairie's Aboriginal Student Job Shadowing Program is going to be honored at the Alberta Chamber of Resources 75th Annual Awards Banquet to be held on February 11th. And uh, so congratulations to our staff for taking part in this and, and doing it so well that uh, it was viewed to be outstanding from among uh, the province. Excellent. Thanks very much, Councillor Rice. Um, so on to Environment Committee of January 17th, and Councillor Monroe, I believe that one was yours. We just want to ring into the queue. <coughs> there you go. Thank you very much, Mayor Given. Uh, I'll move that Council receive the minutes of the Environment Committee meeting held January 17th, 2011. Thanks very much. Were there any errors or omissions that anyone noticed in those minutes? Seeing nothing, then I'll, I'll call for the vote. Thank you, that carries, and Councillor Monroe, please carry on. I'll move that, uh, thanks Mayor Given, I'll move that Council approve policy 113, idle reduction for implementation, February 1st, 2011. And just to briefly speak about uh, this idle reduction policy, this is uh, for all of uh, the city fleet and uh, <coughs> employees. Um, it's uh, basically a policy that indicates that uh, uh, we will monitor our vehicles and not run them uh, and or will not idle them when uh, the weather is minus 10 or above uh, plus 25. Did I get that right? Or between those yeah. temperatures. Thank you. Sorry. My, my mistake. Um, and with that being said, uh, the goal is to, to keep our idling time down to 60 seconds. Uh, in, in that temp temperature range. Uh, now, there are some exceptions to this uh, policy, and that includes uh, uh, anything that uh, involves any type of safety concerns uh, for city workers uh, or anything where it might be uh, a bur unnecessary burden, such as emergency vehicles, which have to ha be continually running in order to uh, utilize their computers and such. Another exemption would be our uh, transit system uh, in the uh, 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 with keeping with, uh, I guess, customer satisfaction as far as having a warm bus. We don't want to uh, let those uh, vehicles be turned <coughs> off. Um, I believe that I've, I've covered most of it. I, I will, uh, I would certainly entertain any question, 
any questions in regards to the idle reduction policy. Okay, thanks very much, Councillor Monroe. I do see somebody in the queue for a discussion. Uh, Councillor Rice. Okay, just, just to clarify and confirm, this policy is directive only and restrictive only as it relates to city vehicles. It does not have an implication for the public. Councillor Monroe, do you want to turn your microphone on there for that? Um, city uh, vehicles and contractors to the city are Im uh, impacted by this. It does not affect any of the other, uh, anyone that's non-city. Uh, the hopes of the policy are that uh, perhaps maybe some other companies will adapt the uh, similar policy. Uh, and I believe as well that the province is looking at, uh, at an idle reduction policy at will and when that comes available, we would certainly look at ad adapting that into our policy. Well, is it the intent of the Environment Committee that they will make representations, say, through the Rotary Club and the Chamber and that, encouraging other businesses to, uh, to enact this type of policy? At this time, I'm not exactly sure uh, if that would be the venues that they would use, but I think that they, uh, uh, I believe that Michelle is going to be presenting this to various uh, companies. Thank you very much. Okay, can't see Councillor Wong. Thank you very much, Mayor Given. I guess I just wanted to point out also that this isn't another job that we're asking our bylaw officers to help monitor. I believe this is being an internal policy that it would be up to uh, staff supervisors to uh, make sure that their staff are adhering to the policy. Um, thank you, uh, Councillor Wong. Um, I will add that, um, or pardon me, I guess I'll respond with, uh, there was a certain amount of homework done uh, before this policy was established and they do have the full support of the supervisors throughout the city. Uh, they've, they've all, uh, uh, discussed it with their staff and they felt that it, this was a very workable policy. Okay, great. Okay. Thanks very much, mm -hmm. Councillor Wong. I see a few others in the queue. Councillor McLean. Uh, thank you, Mayor Given. Um, Councillor, uh, Mr. Moreau, uh, the question I have is, this is just a part of the first uh, stage. There's gonna be four stages in bringing this out. And as well, the access is only minus 10. There's some going to last year to bring it up, but as our community lives in a colder, we get pretty cold up here compared to Calgary, we'll be looking at all kind of stuff. Right now we'll follow maybe what the province is going to do. This is just the start of the program. This is just start and see how it proceeds. Is that correct? Uh, thanks, Councillor McLean. Absolutely. I mean, it is it is a policy at this, at this uh, state, um, certainly down the road. Uh, if, uh, as things develop, uh, I think we could see this develop into a bylaw. Thanks very much. I see Councillor Radburn in the queue. Thank you, Mayor Given, and uh, thank you, Councillor Monroe. I, I just wanted to pick up on what uh, Justin said. Uh, I, I, I do, th I would commend our staff and Michelle for the leadership in working on this um, um, to come to something that uh, the city can move forward with and show some leadership within the community. So I certainly will be supporting uh, this motion. Thanks very much, Councillor Redburn. Any further discussion or debate on the motion? Seeing none, I'd call for the vote. Thank you. And that motion does carry. Councillor Monroe, is there anything further that you wanted to cover from there? Uh, thanks, uh, Mayor Given. I think there's just uh, one last thing that came out of our meeting that I'd like to maybe share with everyone, and that was uh, one of our delegation, or I guess our only delegation that uh, came, was the Canadian Institute of Public Health Inspectors uh, was there, um, wanting to discuss uh, uh, 2011 Environmental Public Health Week. Uh, and at the meeting, there was a motion uh, uh, put forth uh, for the Mayor Given to proclaim January 17th to 23rd, 2011 as uh, Environmental Public Health Week. And thank you very much, Mayor Given. Yeah, thanks very much, Councilor Monroe. Okay, so on to Protective Services Committee from January 18th, and uh, Councilor Radburn, I think that's you. If you just ring into the queue and cool. Okay. Thank you, Mayor Given. I move Council receive the minutes of the Protective Services Committee meeting held January 18th, 2011. Thank you very much. Has anyone noted any errors or omissions in those minutes? Seeing none, I'll call for the vote. Thank 
you. That motion carries. Please carry on, Councillor Redburn. Thank you. I move Council approve the transfer of funds from the Fire Department Equipment Replacement and Business Initiatives Reserve to the Fire Department Operating Budget in the amount of $300,000 as part of the 2010 year-end financial process. The background to this uh, is as follows. Um, due to an oversight during budget data entry, the Fire Department omitted uh, to include an estimate for uh, Fire Department and Dispatch Equipment for, uh, for annual equipment replacement in the 2010, actually, and 2011 budgets. Policy requires Council approve transferring reserve funds, monies into the operational budget. So this was $300,000 that was spent in 2010 that included such items as firefighter bunker gear, self-contained breathing apparatus, vehicle extrication equipment, portable and mobile radio equipment, hazardous materials detectors, thermal imaging cameras, and pump replacement on ladders. So this was uh, an oversight, and uh, the only way to deal with it is uh, through the reserves. There are sufficient reserves to cover this. And we may have a similar, there could be a request at the end of 2011 because the same thing happened in 2011 in terms of this uh, administrative error. Okay. Thank you. Thanks very much, Councillor Edward. And so I do see Councillor Rice in the queue. Are you going to buy all that with 300 grand? Yes. Yep. Well, they must be going to a wholesaler. They, ha they had the numbers there for us. Okay, thank you. Okay. Uh, any further discussion or debate on the motion? Seeing none, I'll call for the vote. Thank you. That motion carries. And uh, was there anything else to highlight from that set of minutes, Councillor Redburn? Uh, I just did want to do uh, mention You're in. to Council that um, we did receive a uh, kind of a report on the Northwest Regional Communication Center overview for for all of us, uh, particularly our, our new councillors. Um, Jeanine Blackburn presented that and. Uh, we did receive a report on the Youth Intervention Diversion Program by uh, crime prevention staff. So they're both uh, very informative. Okay. Thank you. Thanks very much for that update. Uh, next is Community Development Committee, and I believe that was Councillor Gustafson. Thank you. Well, thank you, Mayor Given. I'll move that Council receive the minutes of the Community Development Committee meeting held January 18th, 2011. Did anyone notice any errors or omissions in those minutes as you read through them this weekend? Seeing none, I'll call for the vote. Thank you. And that motion carries. Councillor Gustafson, was there anything else that you wanted to highlight from those minutes? Um, yes, we had a number of uh, correspondence uh, um, in the meeting. The, the highlight of was the uh, We've been asked to uh, host the, put in a bid to host the 2014 uh, Winter Games. So committee, uh, committee direct administration to report an outline with the scope of work involved to host the 2014 Winter Games, uh, including sporting events, which events, funding and volunteers to review at a further committee meeting. I believe it would be a good, another feather in our hat to, to host a, the Games in Grand Prairie again. And that's about it. Thanks very much, Councillor Gustafson. Um, so from there, we'd move on to items of correspondence, of which uh, this week we have none. Um, the delegation business, certainly uh, the Aquaterra one has been received. Um, I wonder if maybe we could have a motion to receive for information the presentation made by Ms. King. I see Councillor Rice. I move that we receive Ms. King's uh, uh, presentation for information uh, and await her further submission. Okay. Thanks very much, Councillor Rice. Uh, so any discussion or debate on the motion? Seeing none, we'll call for the vote. Thank you, that motion carries. I believe that deals with all of our delegation business. We have no notices of motion and for council member reports, there were two that were noted ahead of time and uh, Councillor McLean, you wanted to report on community futures? Thank you, Mayor Gibbon. Um, community Futures Board, which I'm part of the committee is there's a lot to learn there, but they help in our community quite a bit. They've been operational 25 years. They're celebrating this year, so I wanted to make a note of that. They've helped about 500 businesses out in that time, and there's quite a few in our downtown area that have uh, had direct impact because of Community Futures. And they're hoping to come out with, and I hope I ain't taking the thunder from them, of kind of like a, a sticker, 
in front of the business. Now, I don't know how it's going to look or anything like that, where basically this individual business or a couple of them, uh, they were a part of Community Futures developing on, on the way. And I think this is going to be, a, I'm hoping it goes right through, and everyone that is part of it, I imagine, put it in their front window because it's astounding how many businesses that were helped out because of Community Futures. So I just have to say that, and when I know a little bit more, I want to bring it to uh, Council. Thank you. Okay, thanks very much for the update, Councillor McLean. Um, Councillor Wong, you wanted to give us an update on the Peace Watershed Planning Advisory? Yes, thank you very much, Mayor Given. I spent most of today at uh, the Mighty Peace Watershed Alliance Initiators Group, which met in Peace River. It's the Initiators Group adopted the bylaws, process guidelines, and strategic plan, as well as the 2011 budget today. Uh, the society will be filing society formation documents, as well as a grant application to Alberta Environment uh, to cover the 2011 expenses. Alberta Environment has been extremely supportive to date and recognizes that the Peace River Basin is the last water basin to form a watershed advisory council in Alberta. As a bit of background information, the Peace River begins at the Bennett Dam in BC. It, it is one of the largest uh, water basins in terms of length in Alberta. It goes across to the east. Uh, our role in it is uh, that it, we contribute to that watershed. Uh, the water comes from the Wapiti River, flows into the Smoky River, and meets up with the Peace River, or the Peace River just about at Peace River itself. Um, the, the river itself travels east towards Fort Chippewyan and empties into both Lake Athabasca and the Mackenzie River, depending on how the flow is. Sometimes it flows down and sometimes it flows uh, upward towards the north. Now, the Peace Athabasca Delta, which is the area where the rivers converge, is an extremely sensitive area because it is downstream of everything. Uh, back in the 70s, as a result of the DDT that was used in pesticides from all the farmers, the uh, the water was impacted and led to a near extinction of the peregrine falcon, which was affected in that, uh, in that area because it is a breeding ground. Um, so w w once that was recognized by the, by the government and DDC was, uh, they stopped using it, uh, they actually were able to salvage that species by uh, creating a hatchery in Wainwright, Alberta, and they got most of the eggs from Fort Chippewyan area. Um, it's, it was really interesting that the, that the uh, peregrine falcon actually, they do something called double clutching, which isn't you know, what you do in a, in a big semi-truck you know, with a double clutch, but um, when you, if you remove the eggs from their nest, they will lay another set of eggs that same season. So they were able to remove one set of eggs and set up a hatchery in Wainwright and repopulate the species. So most of the peregrine falcons in Canada were, were hatched from the Wainwright hatchery. And it was, you know, it's, it's a very unique and wonderful thing that they were able to do environmentally out of Alberta. Um, in any case, that was just an aside note. It was, it, there was a lot of history that was given to us today. That was just one of those uh, environmental feel-good moments. Uh, the job of the Watershed Advisory Council is to assess the current state of the watershed and they may make recommendations to the province for their water for life plan. So the, initi the initial general meeting is going to be held on March 18th, 2011 in Peace River. This will formalize the group as a society and will allow them to apply as a watershed advisory council. Uh, they're asking that once the public notice is ready to be put out, which should be no later than February 16th because they need 30 days notice before, before a general meeting, that uh, the city post that on notice on their website to see if there's any interested members uh, from our area that would like to travel out to Peace River and be a part of the Watershed Advisory Council. Okay, thanks very much, Councillor Wong. Any uh, questions for Councillor Wong? Yeah. Councillor Rice? Um, explain to me, uh, how does the river flow upstream and downstream? Well, apparently when, when the Peace River flows extremely high, um, it forces the water uh, down towards the Athabasca, so south towards the Athabasca. But in years where the flow is lower, there is uh, more pressure from the southern lakes, sort of from the southern lakes, and they flow. They force the direction of the river the other way up towards the Mackenzie River. 
Is that is that like common or is that something unique? It's fairly unique. It's it's a modeling nightmare apparently for Alberta environment because they have hydrologists that try to model our lakes yeah. and to get an idea of uh, flood and drought patterns. And this one it just really baffles them. There you go. See, this ranks right up there with you. Learn something new every day. <laughs> It's no wonder this is the last area to have a watershed advisory council if our watershed is that confusing. Yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay. Any, uh, anything further in, um, on that point? No, I'm seeing none. Set. Okay, thanks very much. And uh, Councillor Crokin, you had uh, Prairie Gallery Board. Thanks, Mary Um On January the 19th, I attended the Gallery Board meeting. And pleased to report the gallery is doing remarkably well, despite the challenges that construction, as you all know, uh, imposes upon it. The uh, main exhibition space at the gallery has been closed since August 31st for construction, but the gallery has continued its service throughout programs in uh, schools, exhibitions at other locations in Grand Prairie, and traveling throughout northwestern Alberta. Uh, just in the last three months, even without an exhibition to see, the gallery received about 2,000 visitors through its doors, which is down 36% from the same year, uh, period a year ago, but almost uh, doubled the number that would have been expected prior to the construction of Montrose Centre. Uh, also in the past three months, approximately 19,000 people visited the traveling exhibitions throughout northwestern Alberta. Uh, in those three months, the gallery presented its traveling exhibitions in 27 separate locations, including Grand Prairie Public Library, St. Pat's Catholic School, Grand Prairie, and St. Joseph's High School in Grand Prairie. Uh, the gallery's website uh, was visited almost 10,000 times last quarter, and the gallery has an active social media presence that rivals some of our local media organizations in the size of its audience on Twitter and Facebook. I am especially pleased to report that over the past year, Prairie Gallery has contributed $4,005,550 towards uh, both the construction of the Montrose Center and the restoration of the Prairie Art Gallery from funds it has raised itself in grants and donations. The, grant, uh, the gallery hopes to have a new exhibition open in mid-March if construction permits and the gallery building should be complete by the end of this year. That's it. Okay, thanks very much, Councillor Crokin. Uh, if there were no further council member reports, we'd... Oh, Councillor Rice has a question. I have a question for Councillor O'Toole, our representative on the library board. When are we going to get signs inside the library that... signs, you know, in the building there? Inside the building, you're yeah. talking Council Rice? Um, like the washroom? Sure. Right now, we're in negotiations with the city to get a sign on the outside of the building. If you notice right now, it's kind of a, a portable makeshift type sign. Yes. Uh, we're dealing with the bylaws and, uh, and that sort of thing right now. As for the signs, uh, we're dealing with that as well. Okay, so, so a, very a, near a future. It's a process, yes. Okay. Councillor Rice, is there particular signs? Cause, uh, no, there's just no signage at all inside or outside on that building, which is, is uh, you know, a shame because, uh, you know. I know exactly what you're talking about, and it's being discussed as we speak. Thank you. The process, there's a number of, of uh, users in that facility, and uh, tenants, and they're coming up with something. So, okay. thank, thank you. you very much. Okay. Thanks very much. Um, so from there, maybe uh, Councillor uh, O'Toole, we'll start with you for Council Roundtable. Okay, for a roundtable on January 11th, uh, Council and Echo Gas uh, had a short informative meeting in with regards to what to expect over the next year in the Grand Prairie area. Uh, on uh, later that day, uh, some of the Council met with uh, uh, the people at the Sunrise House. We had a tour. Of that, this is a youth emergency shelter, and we met with the executive director Tanya Wald and board member Sean Dirksen. Uh, this is a shelter that the Rotary had a big part in renovating the building, as and as well, the city uh, of Grand Prairie had some funds invested in this project as well. This project, uh, which I'm very happy to uh, have in this community, operates 24 hours, seven days a week with a maximum three-day stay, and it's for emergency use only, no long-term stays. On the 12th, I attended the Chamber of Commerce uh, luncheon 
uh, with guest speaker uh, from the uh, ATB discussing the economy and some of the practices that drove the economy of the USA down. And uh, it was a very informative meeting, which was very well attended, one of the largest in the Centre 2000 building. Uh, there was a number of councillors also in attendance there. On the 13th, the following morning, uh, they had the Chamber of Commerce morning mixer. Uh, this uh, was a special event that uh, I was proud to be a part of. Uh, Menzies Printers uh, made a, a substantial donation to the multiplex uh, and the details of, uh, of a location in the, in the multiplex with, will have some markings of the Menzies family. And I just want to thank the Menzies family uh, for doing a fantastic uh, uh, support. Uh, the Menzies family has been in the community for a great number of years, um, so thank you. Uh, what else we went here? At lunch, uh, the council was invited to meet with the public school board. Uh, this was a meeting that was scheduled long before the untimely passing of Superintendent Chris Gannett. Uh, topics of discussion included the need of another high school in the Grand Prairie and the future growth of the school system. On the 14th, I attended the Big Brothers fundraiser, and I got to admit, Alex's wife did very good. She won a prize. I think like their backyard's going to be looking pretty hot this year. And I also want to recommend or er, thank Alex for giving Councillor Gustafson uh, the greetings on behalf of the city at the beginning of the event. On the 17th, uh, John Laners with the Alberta Health Services Board. Uh, gave a presentation uh, to the council and we all uh, yeah and on the 18th I attended the Pre protective services meeting uh, community development uh, we had a library board meeting that day I also attended the drillers football meeting they've got some discussions that they would like to deal with with the city at present uh, we'll keep that kind of hush hush I met with uh, a concerned citizen and answered some questions that he insisted that I meet with later on that day so 10 o'clock bedtime wasn't an issue and I also went to the archives meeting and attending the northern uh, the growing of the north conference so I'm uh, pretty busy <laughs> thank you not to toot your own horn or anything yeah I got one more uh, <laughs> <laughs> I also want to pass on uh, my condolences to the John McInnes he was um, uh, the owner, him and his wife both owned JB Insurance, and he had an untimely passing earlier in January. Thank you. Thanks very much, Councillor O'Toole and Councillor McLean. Thank you, Mayor Given. Besides our normal day routine in two weeks for committees and everything, there was uh, a long protective service committee, and I promised uh, Councillor Wong that I would go to the combative sports uh, lunchtime announcement and I ran out of the protective service committee to get there on time and it was scheduled for the next day which I had an appointment that day so I just wanted to say the council wrong I'm looking forward to your first event and uh, coming to the city I'm sure you've been working on that quite a long time the other thing as well and I see another councils there was uh, the northern conference uh, on 9th January 19 20 21st I was at it pretty well the majority of the time there was a couple of events where a person had to step out but a remarkable show, and I think the paper said uh, the front page it was a hit, and it was a hit, and I hope it continues because uh, Northwest uh, Alberta is an economic force in our community, and we need to go forward and have make sure this conference continues and new ideas come forward on that. As well as this morning, we had an uh, annexation uh, meeting and an assessment meeting, and, and both of them there's an awful lot involved in the assessment one I'm going to need more help with, <laughs> but the annexation is looking forward to moving on and uh, pass it on there. Okay. Thanks very much, Councilor McGinn, Councilor Wong. Thank you very much, Mayor Given. On January 13th, I was present with Council at the public school board meeting at their central office. On January 17th, uh, I was present with uh, Council as I met with Alberta Health Services board member, John Laners. On Wednesday, January 19th, uh, I was at the Crystal Center when Evolution Fighting Championships uh, made their media announcement. 
that they'll be holding Grand Prairie's first mixed martial arts event on May 14th at the Crystal Center and tickets will be on sale shortly. I want to thank Councillor Radburn and our uh, Combative Sports Commission member Lee Finnebrotten for coming out to the event. I also want to recognize and thank Councillor McLean for coming out on to support us on the Tuesday. That's when I invited Council out on the wrong day. Uh, but thank you very much for uh, making time on, in your schedule. And finally, on Thursday, January 20, 20th, I was at the Growing the North conference. Thank you very much. Okay. Thanks very much, Councillor Wong. Councillor Rice? Uh, I too attended the meeting with Atco Gas um, and the Menzies Morning Mixer uh, and really appreciated their support uh, for the multiplex. Attended the meeting with the public school board also attended an Alberta Recycling Management Association board meeting, that's a tire electronics and paint, um, as well as a local authority's pension plan, um, and uh, was suitably impressed by Councillor O'Toole's picture with Mike Holmes appearing on our web page. Oh, now look at he's got to run to look at it. He was asking me for advice. <laughs> okay, that's really scary. Um, and uh, in a very uh, serious note, I want to pass on my condolences to the family of former city alderman Harold McKay, uh, who was a pleasure to work with uh, when he was on Grand Prairie Council. Okay, thanks very much, Councillor Rice. Councillor Monroe? Thanks, Mayor Given. I've got nothing. Okay. On holidays. Okay. Thanks very much, Councillor Monroe. Councillor Crokin. Thanks, Mayor Given. On uh, January 11th, I also was uh, at the lunch with ATCO. Uh, on the 12th, uh, Center 2000 lunch and learn with the uh, CAO of Alberta Treasury Branch, which was really in informative. The morning mixer, and again, kudos to uh, Grant and Jamie Menzies for the uh, contribution to the spot in the multiplex. And on the 15th, I was very, very proud to represent Mayor Given and Council a, at the uh, High on Ice in uh, Fort St. John. Now, uh, you know I'm very, very talented, and we do have pictures, and I hope they're on the website, and uh, we'll make sure Audrey gets those or whatever. Now, this is, uh, I was taking part in cutting, and I'll just pass these around. But the uh, power saw was, uh, I had safety pants and boots on, so don't ever think that I was, wasn't protecting your commodity, which would be me. <laughs> <laughs> and they're looking forward to seeing uh, yourself, uh, Ms. Mayor Given, next year. I said, well, I will uh, continue if uh, you can't make it again. Um, on 16th, uh, I attended the, uh, the noon meeting with uh, John Leaners. Very informative about our hospital and our region and the province. 19th, I was at a gallery meeting. And the 1920-21, of course, the Growing the North. And uh, there was two very special people there. Our premier uh, spoke of uh, how much he appreciated uh, the businessmen and the opportunities in the north. And uh, kudos to him and our... Uh, our green people that are up in the north end. Mike Holmes, uh, he was asking who did need some uh, help out in the crowd, and I told him to go see um, Kevin. And that's all I have, um, Mayor Given. Thanks very much, Councillor Crokin. Councillor Gustafson. <clears throat> Thank you, Mayor Given. I attended the ACO gas luncheon, the ATB Learn Lunch and Learn. Uh, the Chamber Mixer, thanks again to uh, Grant and Jamie Menzies for their generous donation. Uh, I also attended uh, industry training uh, put on by Janet Plant. Uh, information uh, gathering and uh, sharing on the supply chain workshop and energy management. As well, I attended the uh, GP School District Board. And on behalf of Mayor Given, attended the Big Brothers and Big Sisters event at uh, the Ultimate Escape Annual Fundraiser, which was a very good game of deal or no deal, and thanks that I brought my wife. I get to work in the backyard all summer. And I attended the uh, Growing the North Conference, uh, the first night, a taste of uh, a taste of the peace, country peace, 
pre pre conference event hosted by Farm Credit Canada. Uh, Tom Drug, founder of Spitz Seeds, on the story of Spitz Seeds, a farm business uh, success. He grew his company from a five hundred thousand dollar a year company and sold it for thirty five million. Very very interesting story. Uh, then the following day, I uh, I listened to Mr. David Chilton, the uh, author of the uh, Wealthy Barber book. His, uh, when we started out by saying that the, uh, the world has too much debt, big debt problems, and he talked a lot about the first and second mortgages in the states where people have foreclosed on their mortgages, but they're still living in their houses for free. He asked the question, and if, if, uh, what happens if China slows down? What would happen to our economy? Like, like anybody got anything within from China here? I imagine there's a few. Uh, debt management is very important, uh, living within our means. And uh, he, he talked about uh, saving money and uh, home renovations, how many people get a crying line of credit to get a home renovation and how you shouldn't do it because it's not really putting money in the right direction. Funny, uh, last week he also, or this, he mentioned that our national pastime is complaining. I don't know if you guys heard any complaints last week, but I heard a few. <laughs> But what he was alluding to was, uh, you know, how we complain about our, uh, you know, if somebody's on the other line, you got to switch over on your cell phone. And in the old days, if you had a zero on your number, you had to wait for the darn dial to go all the way around and how much time that would take. And, and he doesn't understand why the healthcare, uh, the biggest advice given out would be to uh, eat an apple and go for a walk. I was also fortunate enough to run into Mayor uh, Glenn Taylor there. Uh, he's a kingpin for the uh, Rural Development Fund. Uh, $30 million uh, left in their, uh, in their funding to give out. Uh, they're short of applications. Uh, there's 18, 18 months left left to uh, access some of that funding. Uh, there's, uh, they can give it out in up to $5 million uh, to stimulate projects, uh, unique ideas, and, and uh, maybe some innovative schools, bridging finance, as well as bridging financing. I uh, listened to the Prince Rupert uh, transformation of the uh, gateway of the Secan Depot and the uh, loading dock at uh, Prince Rupert. And of course, I've seen uh, Kevin Zinal, Mr. Uh, Mike Holmes, host of Homes and Homes. Uh, part of one thing, interesting stuff that he had to say was uh, how we think green and, and promote green, however, we don't teach, teach green. Uh, he gets a lot of slack about you know how he's very expensive and, and everything, but really, he's the right price for the right job, just like you know, councillors. And I uh, also talked a lot about vapor barrier and how the, uh, how if you do things right the first time, uh, you won't have to go back and do it again in regards to vapor barrier, that uh, mold companies are one of the fastest growing companies around. So uh, do it right the first time. And he also spoke about how we teach, we teach uh, carpenters and all the trades of, uh, of theory instead of, or we should teach theory instead of just how to do it. Other interesting things he said was 50% uh, of contractors will retire in the, ne in the next 10 years. So a growing city like Grand Prairie, uh, we could be in a lot of trouble if we don't have 50% of our contractors. And uh, he also uh, spoke about the need to, uh, we need to change our minimum codes to save our environments. Everybody builds to the minimum code instead of taking that extra step to do it right the first time. And, uh, you know, there's 7 billion people on this planet, uh, what are we doing with our children? And he, he with his, his building aspects, he warranties homes for, for five years, which is, uh, really puts, puts a lot on his name. And then he finished off by saying, you don't know unless someone teaches you. So a uh, very good conference. I really liked it a lot. And I finished out the last two weeks going to the Storm Games where they won some good games. Thank you. Okay. Thanks very much, Councillor Gustafson and Councillor Radburn. Thank you, Mary Gibbon. Um, I'll go quickly because uh, things have been covered. Um, attended the council uh, information session uh, luncheon with Atco Gas. Uh, did the tour and discussion with Sunrise House uh, director and board chair. Uh, I, I must say that I was very impressed with the changes in uh, in Sunrise House and uh, and looks like they're focusing on their mandate and uh, moving forward uh, very positively. Uh, Chamber of lunch and learn. Uh, council information session with the uh, Public School District Board. Council lunch with uh, Mr. Laners. Uh, and I, as Dan, thank you, Dan. Uh, uh, I did attend the Come Out of Sports Media Conference. I, I did want to mention, Jane, uh, 
staff at the Crystal Center uh, attended the uh, media event as well, and so I thought that was very appropriate. So uh, I thought that was very good. They were there on the right day. Um, I attended the Growing North Conference as well. I took in the uh, banquet uh, Thursday evening and was there uh, Thursday and Friday. Um, uh, I did attend the Storm Game and the Heart and Stroke one, so I uh, was sitting in my regular seat as I watched uh, Mayor Given uh, perform the ceremonial face-off. I think he wanted to do a proclamation too, but uh, it was read. It was there. Um, and on the 24th, uh, this morning, I attended the Annexation Taxation 101 session. Thank you. Thanks very much, Councillor Radburn. Um, the uh, events that I attended over the last couple of weeks, I also attended, of course, the uh, lunch with ATCO representatives, and it was uh, good to note that uh, obviously very close partners with the City of Grand Prairie, uh, both representatives from ATCO Gas and ATCO Electric were there. Uh, later that day, I was at Sunrise House with uh, a couple of other members of Council. January 12th, I was at Centre 2000 in the evening for a presentation from the CEO and Chief Economist of ATB Financial, which was uh, enlightening and certainly was bullish on the uh, future for the peace country uh, and Alberta as a whole. Later that evening, I was at the Service Plus Inns and Suites to, for a farewell for Lorraine Gabriel, who is going to be leaving the Service Plus Inns and Suites, um, and uh, we wish her well in all her new adventures. January 13th in the morning, I was up early for the morning mixer at Menzies. Uh, as noted, uh, we certainly appreciate the support of the Menzies family personally and uh, their business entities. And I think the Menzies community spot is a very fitting place for them to find a home in the multiplex and uh, I think another good community partner coming on board. Later that day, I attended at the Stars Lottery launch at Kia Motors. Um, good to see that the Stars Lottery is uh, underway. It's a fantastic event which provides really the majority of uh, f their sort of supplemental funding throughout the course of the year. Uh, the lotteries always do sell out and so I would encourage people to get their tickets early if they can. And uh, thanks very much to uh, GP Kia for supporting STARS. Uh, no, if you look around town as the STARS vehicles drive around, uh, they are often Kia vehicles and uh, that's due to that partnership. And then uh, later that day I was at the Grand Prairie meeting with the Grand Prairie Public School Board. And then I flew down to Edmonton that evening where the next day I attended at the AUMA Mayor's Symposium. Um, I wasn't able to make the first day, but on the second day they had a fairly wide range of speakers uh, that looked at issues from balanced leadership to the financial obligations uh, and uh, audit obligations and legal obligations that uh, mayors have. Uh, and uh, I really appreciated the opportunity to meet with some of the colleagues from across the province. January 17th, of course, I was here at City Hall for the meeting with uh, uh, Alberta Health Services Board member John Lerners. And then January 18th and 19th, um, I was at the Growing the North Conference. Uh, was had the privilege of having dinner with the Premier one evening, and the next day bringing greetings on behalf of the City of Grand Prairie and Grand Prairie Council. Um, I have to say about the conference that uh, this year I opened my eyes to what a fantastic asset we have locally in this conference. The quality of speakers that we had drew people from all across the province, and oftentimes uh, that's not the case. If we want to see that quality of speakers, we have to go somewhere else. And so I have to say to the organizers that they've done a fantastic job in building this conference to something that draws people into Grand Prairie rather than us having to go somewhere else. And so hopefully we see that continue. And uh, I'm very proud that the City of Grand Prairie was a partner, in, uh, financial partner in supporting that conference this year. Um, and then one other note was that on the morning of the 18th, the uh, presidents of Canfor, Ainsworth, and Warehouser were all in attendance. And uh, from people in the forestry industry that were in attendance, they say that that's the first time that they can remember all of those folks in the same room to make a presentation on the same stage on the same day. And so I think that was really, uh, really good to see. And it was uh, very comforting to know that all three of those organizations have taken some very unique steps to ensure that they're financially viable in the Grand Prairie region and in fact are still committed to looking at the expansion plans in some case. Uh, Ainsworth uh, still has on their uh, drawing board uh, an expansion plan for over $100 million and uh, both the others are economically f very healthy so it's good to see that. Uh, later that evening I attended at the Storm Game for the Grand uh, for the Heart and Stroke Foundation. I was there to read a proclamation but I think uh, in the program it just ended up a little bit uh, uh, speedy, so we didn't get that opportunity. For those who did buy tickets uh, for the red dress, I appreciate their support, and I know the Heart and Stroke Foundation was. Unfortunately, a bet's a bet, and the target was 500 tickets sold, and uh, my understanding is the number was somewhere around 260, 280 tickets sold. Uh, so all people got to see was me with a red boa. 
Uh, so I pulled out the feather bow on center ice and, and put it on. I was happy to do that. Uh, happy to support the Heart and Stroke Foundation. And of course, there's always, I, I was happy not to wear the red dress, but of course there's always next year. And so uh, we'll try that again. Um, on Saturday, January 20th, um, I attended on behalf of the City of Grand Prairie at the Celebration of Life for uh, former Superintendent Chris Bonet. Um, and uh, a celebration of life should really uh, um, look at the excellent qualities in a person. And I have to say that leaving uh, Chris's um, event, I was inspired to do more in my role on council. Um, and I think that really speaks to what type of person he was and, and the role that he had in our community. Uh, and then finally, on a, another sad note, uh, I want to extend on behalf of City Council uh, our heartfelt condolences to the family of Steve Kay, one of our city staff who passed away suddenly. Um, of course, these are always uh, very difficult times to deal with, and so our love and support to his family and to his City of Grand Prairie family who will be missing him. And with that, that's all I have to report.